Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to this Google News Lab training. I am, my name is Megan Chan. I'm the news ecosystem lead here at Google. And I'm really excited to start off this series about tools for reporters. I'm talking to you today about Journalist Studio and Pinpoint. Um, just a little bit about me for background. I've been at Google for about a year and a half now. Before this, I spent about a decade in journalism, uh, mostly at the intersection of tech and editorial. So I was the director of digital operations at the Washington Post. Before that, the director of digital product at Politico. Oh, excuse me. Um, and so I'm really excited um, to talk with you a little bit more about these initiatives coming from the Google News Initiative. My career, as I said, is always sat at this intersection. And the GNI is really Google's effort to help build a stronger and better ecosystem by bringing the best of our technology and our product know-how to bolster re better reporting and, and an easier editorial process. If you'd like to find out more about our training, you can go to this short link. Um, we'll put it in the comments as well. And you can go through more self-guided um, tours um, and courses, and then also see um, about some of our other live events that are scheduled for later this year. So jumping right in, I'd love to talk with you about Journalist Studio. And really what Journalist Studio is, it's a collection of tools from Google that are built specifically for reporters to help you do your work more efficiently, securely, and creative. As you can see here, there's a bunch of different tools in different arenas. So you have things like the advanced protection program and outline that really help you work more securely. Things like Fact Check Explorer and Google Trends that help you find data a little bit better. And then I'm so excited, the new tool that we have just launched is called Pinpoint. And so Pinpoint really had us, the reason we created Pinpoint was to really look at what are pain points in the industry and what can Google sort of use to be additive to that. And so Pinpoint helps you explore and analyze large collections of documents. Um, when I say large, it could be hundreds of thousands, it could be hundreds, um, but we all have been in that situation, I think in a newsroom where it's great that you got a bunch of documents, um, but now you actually have to go through them. And that can oftentimes be challenging. We know it can take a lot of um, resources as well. These are the file types that we support here. I mean, pretty expected, but some things to point out and I'll walk you through in the demo that I am really excited about. Images, um, being able to OCR text in them. Emails, I know that those are oftentimes some of the juiciest bits that reporters can get. And then also audio. Um, and I'll show you how we transcribe that and search that in a little bit. So we'll dive through, uh, dive in. You'll see um, we use our AI ML technology to extract the most commonly mentioned entities. And we've recently um, added in the ability to share documents with teammates. We know that reporting is a big team effort. And so we're really excited about this new feature. All right, let me just jump in right into this demo for you. And please put your questions um, down in the comments if they're I'll try to answer them as we go along, um, but certainly leave time at the end for it as well. So here's the opening to the tool. As you see at the top of here, you can add your own collections. There is a limit of about 200,000 documents, give or take a few, depending on the heaviness of the files that you can upload per collection. And then down below, we've actually worked with some of our key partners, big local news from Stanford University, the Washington Post, Document Cloud, and the Center for Public Integrity to curate some documents that we think all journalists can use. I know there've been a lot of attempts in the past where we say, you know, if I FOIA this information, if I've used it, I wanna share it with my colleagues at a different organization. This I think really helps put it together. And as you'll see with the tool, I think helps you take action on that, um, go through it quickly. So let me just start with this collection of um, documents about NASA that I've had it. Um, so you can see there are about 1300 in here. You can see that automatically what's happened here is it's pulled out the most commonly mentioned people, organizations, and locations. If you're a political junkie um, or a political reporter here, the thing I get excited about is locations also include zip codes. So that's particularly helpful when you're going through campaign finance reports, anything like that. All right, so if I click here, just for a really quick name reference, you can see that what it does is it 
highlights the documents that um, this name appears. I can click on it, it'll highlight it immediately in the green. I can use these buttons on the side here to toggle between documents or I can use um, just do a quick scroll through them as well. The other thing about filters is you might be able to see, uh, do compound filters. So let's see where these two people are mentioned and I don't know where they might have been mentioned with the state of Alabama as well. Also because we are using our technology, our natural language technology, we're also looking here for references of John F. Kennedy. And the thing that I love about this is that it knows that John F. Kennedy is JFK, is not John F. Kennedy Jr. And on second reference is trying to understand which Kennedy you might be talking about in these documents as well. So you can see that very quickly with just those three clicks, I went from over a thousand documents down to 14 documents very quickly. Now, of course, because this is Google, we also have really strong search technology that we help apply, help you apply to your documents. So if I go up here, I can, of course, search again for any of these proper names. But I might also be looking, of course, what are documents about the moon? But what's really great is it understands that I actually might be looking for synonyms to that word, too. For example, lunar. You don't always know exactly what you're looking for, right? But say you do, that's fine. The regular search operators still apply. You can put things in quotation marks, you can add the and, or you can the or as well. Another thing that's really um, great and I think helpful is how many of you get documents back and they're not perfect and they have some scribble in the margins, right? As you can see here, I've searched for a name and then the word state and it's actually highlighted the text for me regularly, but it's also highlighted the handwriting here as well. Also, documents not only have handwriting, but sometimes they're at a weird angle or they're upside down or they're, you know, somehow faded. Um, we've had a lot of success with this. So that to me is a great feature. In addition to this, I talked to you about the how we can OCR text out of images, right? So the way that I describe this function often to people is that if you have a picture of zoo animals, we're not, the pinpoint is not able to say, okay, these and are the types of animals in here. But if the panda is wearing a shirt that says, I am a panda, it'll pick up the word panda. So let me show you how this might work in, in practice. So you can see, I searched for this title. And as you can see here, it's actually picked up that title on this card highlighted here in green. Another function of this is, that I think is pretty game changing is how many of you have audio recordings, either from interviews you've done, from city council meetings, anything like that. So we have, have the ability where you can upload audio. I'm gonna pull it up here. We'll automatically transcribe this using the speech to text technology that we have from Google Cloud. And as you can see, it's also broken it up into different segments here. So what's great here is if you click on this blue button, Congratulate astronauts Bob Cole and William. It'll actually jump you right to that time code in the audio if you want to listen it, to it and get pick up some extra nuance you might not be able to get otherwise. So it's a pretty quick demo of how to use um, Pinpoint. And I think that is, to me, the best part of it. You know, we recognize that there are newsrooms that have a lot of technical resources, but there are a lot of newsrooms too that or you might be a freelancer out there and want to harness this technology. So it's really a tool that all different types of reporters can use um, and find good use out of. And I think one of the best ways to try to help you understand how you might use Pinpoint is to really show you some of the work that's already been done with it. So the first example I'll share is from Maria Ressa from Rappler in the Philippines, where she got a set of CIA documents, which were their daily briefings from Manila from the 1970s. So she uploaded about 17,000 documents. It took about 30 minutes to process. And she was able to really quickly understand what the documents were about and write a piece for her email newsletter um, about some parallels between those documents and then modern, uh, the modern day Philippines. This is another example from the Hearst Connecticut Media Group, and they did an investigation into the boys and girls clubs and sexual abuse in their region. They went through thousands of documents, hundreds of court cases, and Pinpoint really helped them organize their research and also triangulate common terms that were found between different documents. Reveal uh, from the Center of, uh, for Investigative Reporting, I talked to you about email archives and I know how difficult those can be to go through for reporters. 
they did this piece right here, um, looking at COVID testing in ICE facilities in New Mexico, and we're able to use Pinpoint to go through those email archives very quickly. The Boston Globe looked into um, military uh, equipment that was being bought by the police department. And this is an example I talked earlier about finding synonyms. So they weren't quite sure some of the terms that were going to be in the police ledger for what they were buying for equipment. And they were able to type in words and try to find and triangulate and figure out what those synonyms might be as they were doing this investigation. And so these examples are really clear sort of you know, capital letters, investigative journalism, which is so, so important. And the Washington Post has certainly used Pinpoint to do some of those things. But I think the great thing about the ease of using Pinpoint, the ability to share, and the speed of the tool is that can actually really help you in breaking these situations as well. So last year, when special counsel Robert Mueller went to go testify before Congress, the Post was doing a live broadcast. They were also doing their normal live text-based, web-based coverage. And what they did before he went to testify is they uploaded the Mueller report to, um, to pinpoint as well as ancillary documents. And so when he was testifying live, they were able to really quickly go through and say, oh, okay, this is the part he's referencing. Let me double check that. Let me go look at that. And it really helped add more color and more speed to their reporting. This example from the Baltimore Sun is a place that I think we are all familiar with in journalism where a holiday or an annual event happens and we all need to write a piece about it. And so here they were actually able to use one of our shared collections, which was the FBI's file on Martin Luther King Jr. They were able to quickly filter by Martin Luther King Jr. and then the city of Baltimore and find previously unknown connections um, of his time and work with the city. This example from Verificado MX in Mexico focused on their work from the daily um, fact checking the daily um, COVID briefings from the Mexican president. So they were able to take those audio files, have them transcribed into Pinpoint, which helped them then really quickly go and fact check the information. What I think is also really interesting about the work that they did was they were able to also um, compare the transcript that we had from Pinpoint against the government's transcript of, um, of the radio address in which sometimes there were some deltas and that helped them fact check in real time as well. This example from USA Today was done at the beginning of the COVID pandemic and looking at COVID related deaths in nursing homes. This, of course, showed how Pinpoint was super powerful. They FOIA'd, um, they FOIA'd requested documents from all 50 states, and Pinpoint helped them really merge that data together in a way that they probably wouldn't have been able to do by hand otherwise. But you know, we've talked a lot about how Pinpoint can help you from the beginning of the reporting process, when you're gathering information and trying to figure out what's in it, to the middle, to when you're really deep in the reporting. And I think what this example helps with is understanding how it can help at the end too, right? Before you publish, everything that you publish, we know in, you know, as a reporter, you wanna be 110% accurate. And so when that copy desk comes and asks you to CQ those names or CQ the date of something, Pinpoint actually helps them too go directly back to those original documents and not having to sort through you know, your own huge pile of notes to go through things. So investigative journalism is so important. It's so important to the mission of Google. And I'd like to show you this really quick video that I'll talk a little bit more about how USA Today used it, but really the importance of um, this kind of type of work. The biggest challenge for reporting, honestly, is time, right? It's really difficult to say no when somebody wants you to look into something that you believe is important, but you just don't have the time to do it. My colleague Trisha Nadolny and I were asked to handle investigations relating to social services during the pandemic. Our focus really became largely about nursing homes during that time period. We requested records from all 50 states and I uploaded them into Pinpoint pretty much immediately when you upload documents and that side populates with the list of names that are included or places that are included. You can kind of very quickly get an idea of what is in there. 
we compiled that into a database that we then analyzed and provided to the public. For the first time, some families were able to look up their loved one's assisted living facility and see whether there had been a case because in some states and in some counties, facilities were not communicating directly with families in a way where they felt like they understood what was going on. In terms of investigative journalism, our job is to expose wrongdoing, to shed light on something that's going wrong in the hopes that maybe it can go in a better direction. Well, thank you so much for joining this session. Uh, if you'd like to sign up to the tool, please go to this link, uh, g.co slash pinpoint. It'll lead you um, to be able to request access there. And then if you have any questions at all um, after you've watched this, please reach out to the team, pinpoint uh, hyphen support at google.com. We've built this in collaboration with the industry. And as you can see, we continue to evolve on this product and your feedback is incredibly valuable to us. So please reach out. Thank you again so much for joining us today or for those of you who are gonna watch on playback. Um, the, oh, we do have one question. Um, so it is available in seven languages right now, English, Spanish, Italian, German, French, Portuguese, and Polish. Um, but we are working on getting up to par with other languages pretty shortly. All right. Well, thanks again. Have a wonderful day and hope you find the tool useful.